so here is our fire pit area um, we have a portable fire bowl that we use but first I just want to talk about our environment and the safety kind of things that we think about here so first up we're thinking about um, you know the, the environment that we're in what's the ground like we're in the middle of winter right now so it's really wet so that's good um, but I'd also just kind of you know sweep away some of these small things that are a bit tindery um, especially in the drier season but just getting down to the ground um, is a really good idea and especially if you're making a fire onto the ground so making sure you're back down to the ground if you don't have a fire bowl for sure and just clearing everything away and any other hazards in the area like sticks or things that could uh, people could trip over so that's the kind of ground the next thing I'm also thinking about is what's above us how much um, space have we got above our fire have we got any low hanging branches down that, that may come in or get um, catch fire so we're pretty clear in this space we do have some big trees but they're, they're quite high and it's quite a sheltered space for us here I'm also thinking about the weather you know what's the weather doing have we got strong winds coming in um, is it pouring with rain which is going to make it really hard to light the fire and then we're also thinking about the seasons and if there are any fire bans on and you can check those out at checkitsallright.co.nz so this is tinder um that's great for lighting when you've lit it you add these wee sticks on and then you would when it gets really big with these you keep adding more and more stick wood yeah so they get bigger and bigger and bigger and so having it in these kind of piles is quite a good idea isn't it because then we can see we start with this pile here and, and then these are also very good in bark and all this flat wood to start off to absolutely thank you so when we come to setting the fire we will start talking to our tamariki about that this is now a fire space and so that there's no playing in here and it's a walking zone but if you want to walk to the other side of the fire you head out around the outside of the wooden rounds or the seats and you walk around the outside so we just talk about some of those kind of boundary things depending on the number of students you have and the number of teachers will depend on how you manage it um, so I'm just going to give a general idea of, of what we do to to set the fire so Tamariki would you guys like to put some paper on the fire but don't burn the cars right. so we're going to scrunch up some paper and this is part of our fuel okay Hockey so we're going to put some paper in the middle there and then we're going to add some more so we've got some something that can light kind of easily and we can add some more of our tinder as well do you want to get some tinder and then around the tinder we're going to put some smaller kindling now because it is this time of year we are relying on dry wood because um, all our, our collected wood is very wet no, it all so do you guys want to set it into maybe like a teepee or a or do you want to do a construction oh, do you want to set some pieces fantastic so what three things does a fire need to go what three things does a fire need to go um yeah yeah oxygen Heat. Yeah, heat, like so from a match or a flame. Yeah. And wood. Yeah, which is the fuel. Okay, so the air's coming in. We've got the the fuel here and we just need the heat. Yes. yes. Right, last couple of safety things. We've got a um, bucket of water sitting That's the nice most and important close. Thing, guys. Very important. <laughs> and um, we also talk about once we've lit the fire that we once it's lit we can then stand back and move um, away so that the fire can find its rhythm and we can understand which way the breeze is kind of pushing the fire and then we can stand and choose where to stand safely yes. any other safety things we need to think about no what about tying hair back and loose clothing 
kind of making sure our hair, if any long hair is tied back is good um, and anything that's kind of dangling or hanging clothing wise. So today we're going to be using um, flint and steel to start our fires and the reason I love using this with tamariki is because it takes quite a lot of effort and persistence to start a fire in this way um, rather than if we use matches or a lighter then tamariki are kind of like oh let's get a big fire but when we do this just getting any kind of fire is really amazing so it's not about the size of the fire it's it's that oh my gosh we actually made a fire ourselves so there's also a bit of mastery in there um, and just really feeling proud that someone's been able to persist long enough to to be able to get a flame or work as a group to to help start a fire so how it works is we have the flint here and um, steel and you take it from flat on there just up to a slight angle and you push it away from you and pushing it long even strokes and that spark so with the spark you're trying to hold it down into the fire pit close to the tinder um, and with some of our younger children we use cotton wool to help start a fire and um, yeah so that cotton wool gets teased out and we can then get that fire started So we've got some cotton wool here, Ari, do you want to take some of that? And look, you've got some. So I've just teased that out so you can see how this works. Okay, so we've got some fire on both of them. So that's good. Now at this stage, depending on how long your children have been working with fire will depend on if they are involved in this or they step back and someone else comes in. And so we just want to make sure that there's enough air coming through some of those sections. There we go. Because there's a little breeze, there's a lot of air coming through, but sometimes we'll need to blow just in the in the side to help get um, the the flames going. So just added in some tinder to the top, which has helped bring the flames up through, catching some of that water on fire. Is that looking good? Does it need any blowing, Luke, or do you think it's looking pretty good? As it's starting to go a bit, we can just start putting some of these slightly bigger pieces on there. Can I put this quick one? Cool. So when our marshmallow is ready to eat, how many seconds do we count to before we put it in our mouth? This many. Ten. Ten. And why do we do that? Because it might, it might burn your tongue and you, it really hurts. And I had to go to yeah. the doctor. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So it might burn your tongue. Awesome. And also, this is one thing. Our cousin Ada, she... She tripped over and put her hand in the mm. her hands in the fire. That's one thing you don't want to do because it will really, really hurt. 